Hello? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Thanks. Um, so this is joint work with my uh, many co-authors. Um, so um, to reason about programs, programs must have meaning. And uh, the programs we're interested in are effectful. They can have state exceptions, and they can even uh, have recursion. Um, the programs, uh, the meaning we give to programs are defined uh, uh, in a um, formal language, such as Coq, which, uh, interestingly, um, you are modeling these effectful recursive programs in a um, pure and total meta language. So, how is how is it usually done? So, you do some kind of operational semantics. The usual way is to give a transition relation between states of the program. And it's very simple, a uh, very simple idea, and you can extend it to model all kinds of effects. Uh, but this is because it is low level, and I'm going to explain why um, this, is, this has its, its drawbacks. So the, the, the problems come when you pro programs become bigger, and then you would like to be able to decompose your program so your semantics should be compositional. Um, so compositionality is about relating the meaning of the whole program to the meaning of its parts. So in this case, in this very naive example, the sequential composition of two programs, uh, and we are looking at the um, uh, tail of the program. And so imagine we, you look at how it evaluates, and you try to prove that it satisfies some invariant, and now you want to transfer that to some invariant on the composed program. And to do that, you would have to look at how the uh, first part of the program steps in order and to transfer this uh, invariant um, to the whole program. And these many steps give many opportuni opportunities to for, the, uh, for things to break, for the not proof not to go through. Um, and well, you can prove, uh, given a particular semantics, that maybe it has the right property, uh, this compositionality. Uh, but once the language has more and more features, things can uh, get uh, hairy. So, because when you want to model a new effect, you have to introduce new, new syntax. For example, you have evaluation context, have program counters, traces, uh, and possibly exceptions. And this, uh, the problem is that this uh, way of formalizing languages is not very modular. So when your languages have more and more features, you would like to be able to express these features in a modular fashion. So the, the high level point is that uh, you want to be able to have um, use abstraction when modeling your languages um, uh, to reason about them at uh, the at the high level, at the language, at the level of the language itself, uh, but at the same time, at when you have abstraction, you want to also keep your feet on the ground. Uh, what what does this abstraction mean? Um, so, so when you uh, verify a program, you need to verify with respect to some specification. But what happens with your specification is complex, uh, then you need to have an engineering approach to uh, verifying your program. And so one way to do that is to use testing. You look at small parts of your specification, and you try to see whether that makes sense. And for that, you need to be able to run your specification. So to give a m bit more motivation for this, so if you had an executable semantics, then your formal semantics is the reference interpreter of your language. 
you wouldn't have to have these two as separate artifacts. And what that allows you to do is to test other implementations, other compilers, other interpreters, uh, there are. Or you can even use that to test your interpreter itself while you are developing it. And uh, also when you are designing the language, maybe you don't even know what, what are the right uh, features, and so you having the, this interpreter gives you a, a toy to play with and see what, what works and what doesn't. So in a, in a, a proof assistant, you really, uh, the semantics you define are not executable because uh, they're that usually defined in a relational way. Uh, so, so to get from, uh, to know what a state transitions to, um, is not, um, well, it's, the definition does not compute the new state. You have to have a, it's only a logical uh, relation. And furthermore, even if you tried to have a more computational approach to it, you are in a pure and total meta language, as I said, but your language, your modeling has effects, and so you have to find a good way to model that. So to summarize, uh, we are looking for some semantics that is compositional, modular, and executable, and we propose interaction trees as a possible solution. And in particular, this is implemented as a, as a library, so these semantics are reusable. You don't have to reprove the meta theory of our paper, you can just import our library. So uh, interaction trees are not like a, a totally new thing. The, the core concepts are decades old uh, ideas. So uh, what, are, what, what are interaction trees? So the idea is that uh, computations that interact with the external world can be seen as trees. Uh, notably, uh, the, the main nodes, uh, the most important nodes are these, are what we call visible events that um, contain some data saying the, the containing the output of the program at this point. And then um, for and then they expect some input, and for each possible input, there is a branch uh, uh, to a chi uh, child of the tree. Uh, there are also, in uh, the definition of interaction trees, uh, silent steps of computation, and uh, the computation can, of course, uh, terminate with some result. Uh, the, these trees also can be infinite in order to model uh, recursive computations. So in Coq, uh, this definition uh, is, a, uh, is a co-inductive type indexed by an uh, event type, which is itself an index type, and a result type. It is a co-inductive type so that you can uh, model, so that uh, it can represent infinite values. Uh, and so they will have one constructor for the result, the leaves of the tree. You have these two nodes that are a silent step of computation followed by only one child, and these these nodes that contain the, a visible event, um, and uh, it is parameterized by an answer type that uh, is taken by the continuation. So uh, what, what are those events? These events Here's an example of a simple event for a little uh, store effect where you can read and write from variables. And this is a small uh, interaction tree written in Coq uh, using these effects. So as I said, these events can carry some data, so what variables you are reading from, ri writing to. And uh, you have uh, the, the, this event type is indexed by the type of the answer, so when you read, you expect a natural number as an answer, and when you write, you expect just a unit as an answer. So for, to give an example of how you would use interaction trees for modeling uh, little imperative language, so with assignment, sequential composition, and loops, uh, we use denotational semantics. So you replace the syntax by some kind, some um, uh, 
denotational uh, domain. Uh, so in this case, the denotational domain is provided by the interaction tree type. Uh, so an interaction tree where the events are these write and read events. And uh, since it's a simple language, there is no uh, result uh, for, the, for the statements of the language. So once you do this, you have um, a denotation function that constructs a tree, but uh, when you write to x and then you read from x, you would expect to get one. But the problem is, is in these trees, the events are not yet, um, uh, they are not yet interpreted. And for that, you need to provide a handler that says, that can say for how uh, interpret their, them further. So in this case, you could say, how to uh, a read event can be interpreted into uh, uh, some uh, state monad in which you would say it doesn't change the state, x is still mapped to 1, but you get some answer 1 that you can pass to the rest of the computation. And given uh, such a handler, you can uh, lift it using this interp function to construct an interpreter for whole interaction trees. Uh, that uh, threads the states along the tree. So, so the, the handler is um, what you write as a, uh, as a language designer. You can uh, have uh, many different kinds of handlers, and that gives you all kinds of interpreters. But that's also not the only way to uh, interpret interaction trees. You can also extract them because it is just a co-inductive data type and interpret it in OCaml. So using, uh, you can, for example, then make it talk on the network to implement a web server. So uh, interaction trees, uh, it's a library with many combinators to define such denotational semantics. And these combinators come with equations so that you can verify programs. So what are these equations? So the, the, we don't use actually the simple uh, the propositional equality, we define our own equivalence relation on interaction trees that, uh, so that we can caution away all the tau nodes because they are meant to be silent steps. This is what we call bi weak by simulation or equivalence up to tau. Uh, to, and um, another, so to give an example of such equations, we have this uh, combinator iter for uh, writing loops that is uh, equivalent to the body followed by the loop again. And uh, a bit more interesting equation is one where you can, given uh, iter of two composed uh, programs, you can first take out the first program executed, and then the rest is equivalent to the composition of the programs in reverse. And there are many more uh, such laws that um, allow you to uh, rewrite uh, loops um, uh, in various ways. And uh, these, these uh, uh, equations involving recursion are proved using uh, parameterized co-induction, which is implemented in the Paco library. However, this is entirely an internal detail of the library, of our library, and you as a user of this uh, library, you don't have to know about uh, Paco. You can just use the equations as they are. And uh, you can see how we do that in the paper. Uh, so as a case study, we use, uh, we verified a little compiler from the imp language before, uh, we saw before, and the uh, and a little assembly language that is to say made of control flow graphs. So uh, as I uh, just showed, we have the semantics of IMP is defined in two steps. First, you denote uh, using uh, some event type, and then you interpret these events into um, a state uh, in, in a stateful way so that you get um, computation producing some uh, resulting uh, state in, of type sigma imp. And you can do a similar uh, process on 
uh, on the assembly language. Um, so at a high level, it looks uh, the same, but the denote function in particular is, uh, has a quite different structure because uh, it's a different kind of language. And finally, you complete the square by equating the results of these uh, two um, uh, interpretations so that the uh, semantics before compiling is the same as the semantics after compiling. However, if you look closer, there is a little mismatch here. Uh, so this is using the or weak by simulation. The, so if you look closer, there is a little mismatch here because the two sides don't use the same state. And so we need to introduce uh, heter we need to generalize our by simulation relation to be heterogeneous. And so it is uh, indexed by a relation uh, between the two uh, states uh, of the uh, source and target program. So this uh, diagram is what is commonly called uh, semantic preservation. And uh, I, I'd like just to point out that the, this seemingly arbitrary decomposition in two steps reflects into a, uh, in our um, proof structure in an uh, interesting way, which is that there is a first part of the proof that is mostly concerned with control flow that uh, mostly deals with how the denote function work. Uh, the denote function is defined, whereas you have um, uh, operation and effects uh, look at uh, the, cement, the meaning of the interpreter. Uh, uh, finally, the correctness proof is done by um, equational reasoning. Um, so it that is to say, it's mostly a series of rewriting and an induction on the structure of the program. Um, although part of it is because the compiler itself is defined by induction on the program. Uh, and the, what the cool thing about it is that because you only use re re rewriting, the result is termination sensitive because at every step you preserve the termination uh, behavior of the program. And all of that. Uh, as I said, you don't have to use any kind of co-induction uh, for that. So there are uh, many more uh, ways of using interaction tree. This is only one of them. Uh, so in previous work, we used that for modeling the IO behavior of C programs and uh, connect the semantics of C uh, used by VST and those used by Certicos. And uh, we use the executable nature of interaction trees to uh, test using the quick chic tool. Uh, and uh, more recently, uh, there was a poster this week about using interaction trees to model concurrency. And um, you can also ask Steve about how they are used to model uh, LLVM. And with that, I'd like to conclude. Thank you. So uh, for the example compiler that you have, yeah. how different are the events in the source and the target languages? Um, so in the the main difference is that in the um, compiler we have two kinds of state. We have the, both the heap and the registers, um, and so that you have. Um, uh, Yeah, so there are, I think in the end they are quite similar because both are just some kind of state, yeah. But a read maps to a single read and a write to a single write? Um, uh, yeah, I believe so. Okay. Oh, sorry, I stand corrected. Can you repeat the correction? Maybe Yannick can correct. Uh, sure. It's just slightly different in the sense that at the source, as Leah was saying, you have only uh, one kind of event, only one notion of state. 
as a target, you have two notion of states, and they do not match one to one because when you compile your expression, you introduce registers at the assembly level that are not in initially. So you can have uh, arbitrary mismatches. So I'm interested in the size of the sort of software engineering effort to uh, to produce this library. So, sure. for example, if I wanted to reproduce it in Agda or, yes. or a different proof assistant, what's the, I mean, just to order back to you, what's the size of the so the library, talk library? is about 10,000 lines, mm -hmm. uh, and the proof of the compiler is about 5,000, I think. Okay. Um. Thank you. Yeah, uh, could you tell us a bit about concurrency? Like, do you currently handle concurrency? Do you have plans how to uh, incorporate yeah, so concurrency? Yes, there is this uh, work by uh, Irene. Uh, so roughly, interaction trees before the, because the events are really not interpreted in any way, you can certainly interpret them in a concurrent way and interleave uh, events if you want. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, more detailed investigation is ongoing work. <laughs> Yeah, could you talk about the cost of the abstraction here? So if I extract a program, an interpreter I've written using interaction trees to OCaml and then run it, how does that compare to one that I would have written just in OCaml without without this um, structure? Yeah, so I think uh, you would have some uh, overhead. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you have uh, one or two orders of magnitude slowdown. Um, uh, yeah, so there are various, uh, there are existing work on using our uh, like improving this, uh, the, the, the operations uh, of this uh, that we would be interested in integrating in the library. Uh, so one reason we use Relational predicates is because uh, maybe the semantics isn't always defined. I wonder how you handle that with your interaction trees. So if the semantics is not defined, um, well, you can uh, always force it to be defined by either making it diverge or throw an exception. That would be the two most likely ways I would do it. Uh, have you d done any work on deriving program logics from, from these interaction trees to verify, um, say, the, C pro the imperative programs yeah. on one side of your semantics? Um, so in uh, the, uh, let's see. So in the, uh, the, the previous work with, uh, uh, about uh, using C, we had put interaction trees inside um, the the, the uh, precondition of your uh, C program uh, and um, uh, but uh, more generally uh, we are uh, there is also I haven't mentioned here another line of work uh, using about connecting uh, interaction trees and finding a dextra monad for interaction trees um, but yeah but we can talk about it offline sure. Um, so in uh, the comparable correctness theorem for concert is preservation of observable uh, events. But the theorem that you gave was an equivalence parameterized by uh, a ration on states. Yeah. Can you recover something easier to read than what, than what you presented? Uh, sorry, I didn't understand. <laughs> So I think that the compare correctness theorem for concert is simple. It's a preservation of observable uh, events. Okay. And the the theorem that you gave was an equivalence on the states between the source and target languages. Yes. And that equivalence is parameterized by a ratio that might be arbitrary complex. Yes, and that's right. Can you recover something simpler? like the compare um, correctness theorem of concert. 
So if you are talking about external effects, like I.O., then yeah. uh, you would uh, have, um, instead of these uh, empty events at the, at the bottom, you would have some kind of uh, event for modeling I.O., and then this equivalence relation would, ha would be, you would relate the, the, the two. So the, the equivalence at the end is more of a device that you would use to help do this proof. Uh, I think, if you are interested in the I.O. behavior. Okay, thank you.